I said, I live in the light with fleeting moments of darkness. You know, 10 years ago when I was on my knees coming down from addiction, I was living in the darkness with fleeting moments of light. But as we add up these little right actions, one moment at a time, one step at a time, we start to live in the light with fleeting moments of darkness. And the groovy thing that happens is that when the darkness comes in, we don't believe in it anymore. When the littleness shows up, it doesn't make sense anymore. It's like the alcoholic who got sober, who's sitting there trying to have a drink, but they just cannot enjoy it because they know this is not who they are. It no longer resonates with your truth. And so that's what this whole gig is about, adding up these moment-to-moment -moment shifts using these types of tools. And as we start to dwell in the light, we live in the light, and we have fleeting moments of darkness, and they're so fleeting that we're like, ah, oh, whatever, okay, thank you. And those fleeting moments of darkness keep us sharp. They keep us on our toes. They keep us committed to our practice. They keep us committed to teaching. They give us great content to share and great personal experiences to bestow upon the world. But the greatest thing that happens is that when you start to recognize that there's just these fleeting moments of darkness, the reason that they're so fleeting for me is because I have such a quick comeback rate. Now let's talk about comeback rate. We have these moments that bring us out, and it's not actually that the true recovery isn't that we're no longer taken out. The true recovery is that we get taken out and we come home fast. That is recovery. It's how quickly can you come back home you can measure your happiness, you can measure your success, you can measure the greatness within your relationships based on how quickly you have the capacity to come back home. So I want you to start to see, you know, as you start to apply these practices and use these tools, how can you move a little faster? You know, maybe that issue that used to last a decade now only lasts a day. Maybe that issue that used to last a day now only lasts a second. I want to see those comeback rates. And, and I, want to, I want to hear from you tonight when we go into the Q&A about the places where you get stuck and you are feeling like you can't get out. Because those are the areas that are our greatest assignments. But our comeback rate is the real thing we want to focus on. How quickly can we come back home? You know, it's like that situation where I was stuck in the littleness around that story of my friend and thinking I wasn't invited to the party. You know, that lasted five days. You know, five days, that was an old, ancient story. Five days, you know, that was actually a pretty slow comeback rate. But I still came back in five days. And the truth is, is because I came back so quickly, I was able to restore my vision back to the light and have a friendship with this person. Had I not been able to come back, I would still think I wasn't invited to the party and I would be having a party that she wouldn't be invited to. So here's, here's how you come back, and here are the key ingredients to coming back, and I'm going to lay it out for you, and some of it is a bit of what you've already learned with me tonight, so let's just break it down. That first step is the willingness, the recognition that in this darkness I am not happy, this is not where I want to be, recognizing that this darkness is actually the catalyst for your greatest light, and being willing to see it differently, choosing in any given moment, I'm willing to see my addiction differently. I'm willing to see my drama with my relationship differently. I'm willing to see the wreckage from my past differently. That, that, that moment of willingness opens that invisible door and it invites in that spirit to say, yes, show me something new. Being that willing place also requires our capacity to be that non-judgmental witness, to be able to witness on a moment-to-moment -moment basis when we're out. So I know the difference between what it feels like to be out of alignment with love and to be living in love. When I'm out, I'm not breathing, I'm tired, I'm judgmental, I'm talking about myself a hell of a lot. When I'm out, I, you know, I'm really ballsy and fiery and I'm just like, you know, smoky and I'm, and I'm, and I'm a little bit feisty and, and, and it's draining and I feel depleted and I often get sick. I usually start to feel like I'm catching a cold when I'm out of alignment. When I'm in alignment with my truth, I'm breathing, I'm speaking slowly. It doesn't matter what I'm saying, I am experiencing and expressing the truth of who I am. The words come to me naturally, and nothing really matters, I'm not swayed. I'm in faith, I'm trusting, and I'm knowing. So know the difference between what it's like to be out and what it's like to be in. And then when you're in that space of witnessing, Witness your energy, witness your thoughts, and witness your words all throughout the day. And when you witness yourself out of alignment with that truth, say that silent prayer, I'm willing to see this differently. Step one and two, witness it and be willing. 
The next one is a really beautiful, beautiful piece that I, I honestly can say that I wouldn't be standing here today without my meditation practice. Everything that I longed for, in the drink and the drugs and the relationship and the work, all the success, all the fulfillment, all the security, the safety, the love that I long for, I have found on my meditation pillow. 